What up, y'all? Welcome to Pop.com. It's I'm Jojo coming at you from the Woman Cave in Vegas. All right, guys. So uh, a couple days ago, I posted a collectibles haul. Um, I had gone to the great garage and antique show. Um, and if you saw that video, you know that I, along with collectibles, also bought some comics. So that's what we're going to be looking at today, my comic haul. And there are quite a few books, so I'll try to go as fast as possible. Um, and yeah, maybe towards the end, if there's a little bit of time, I'll open some mystery minis as well. So let's just dive into it. I think there were a total of like three, maybe four vendors that I uh, bought books from. Um, but I'll let you know the details as I go. Alright. First up, we have Secret Six, number one. Um, I actually do have the trade to this, but, you know, it's always cool to have the number one issue. So when it's only a dollar, you know, gotta grab it. Um, and then we got Detective Comics number 789. I'm quite certain that I have this book already, but again, a dollar, I mean, Tim Sale, gotta get it, gotta get it. Um, Batman 665, this is Andy Kubert, cover, cover, <laughs> that's pretty awesome, had to get that. Uh, we got Batman 667. I might have this one too, but what the hell, for a dollar, I'll take it. Um, Batman number 40 uh, from the New 52. Uh, pretty cool Capullo cover. I actually have the director's cut version of this, but um, yeah, I saw the regular one, so might as well grab that while I'm at it. Um, Justice Society of America number 27. Cool cover. Uh, 28 right here. And 31, so. And then this one was 50 cents because I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's pretty dirty right here, all along the white here. I mean, can't go wrong with Swamp Thing, so awesome. Um, we got Best Joke Terminator um, number six. And this is part one of the City of Assassins. I'm really digging the bat signal in the background. Very cool. Um, yeah, I want to collect more of these. I, I only have a couple of them. I think I have number one as well, but yeah, it'd be it'd be really nice to have that one. So, so moving into Marvel here, we've got Peter Parker's The Petra Spider-Man number twenty-nine. Super cool cover. I love how the red just pops against the purple, and you gotta love that point of view perspective too. That's awesome. So yeah, this was actually less than a dollar. It must have been like something like 75 cents. And then here's another one uh, for 75 cents as well. And this one's number 116. Just a sweet saber tooth cover. And then we have The Amazing Spider-Man number 287. Again with the black suit Spidey. And then of course they got Daredevil down there. So, you know, 75 cents. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> uh, we have Fantastic Four, number 375. I mean, 90s goodness right here. Gotta love those hologram covers or whatever you call these. Little shiny, in your face. So obnoxious, but totally awesome. <laughs> Gotta love it. So, yep. Yeah. And then moving on. and. Please forgive me, I did not rebag and board these yet, so that's on my to-do list. And I wanted to put the video out, so yeah. Anyways, uh, continuing, this is X-Men Adventures uh, number one. This is one of those where I just always see it in the dollar bin, and for some reason I just always get it. Like, you have to. If you were growing up in the 90s and watched this show, like, you can't not grab this. This is just calling right out to you. So for all you 90s kids out there, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and continuing on with X-Men, we have the Uncanny X-Men number 227. Gotta love the storm cover. I love the yellow bright pop to it too. Um, and yeah, just really cool with the rest of the teams down there. So yeah, love that. Oh. I guess these are mixed up, my bad, because here's some more DC. Surprise! Anyway, so here's Tells the Teen Titans, number 61. 
cool raven cover. And moving on, we got Wonder Woman number 12. Super cool Perez artwork. Um, you know, I just love Perez in general, so anytime I see uh, some of these Wonder Womans for cheap, I always grab them. Anytime. Alright, and then we have The Adventures of Superman number 436. And you know what? This one does have a little bit of damage. It's like a little bit bent if you see that. I guess it's just like storage damage. I don't know. Like it's been sitting in a short box like with um, nothing to really support it. So it's kind of like starting to bend. So that kind of sucks, but it's all good. Um, I can flatten them out. All right. Then we got Suicide Squad number nine. Um, yeah, really like that dead shot cover, so had to grab it. So uh, let's grab this. And next up, we have Warlock and the Infinity Watch number one. Cool collector's item issue. <laughs> Nah, guys, I see this book in every freaking dollar bin out there. Um, and what the funny part is, is that I always pick it up. Every time. Don't ask me why. I just, I'm drawn to it, I guess. And, come on. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's got the infinity gauntlet right there. So, you know, that's awesome. But anyway, it's always there, like, it, it, it's gotta be some, like, unwritten rule somewhere that if you have a dollar bin, you must have a Warlock and Infinity Watch in there. Like, come on, like, it's just, it's just too crazy. It's always there. It's always freaking there. I gotta at least have, like, five of these things. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> so we have X-Men number three right here. Very cool. You know, gotta love that Jim Lee art from the 90s. Super cool. Then we have Captain Marvel, number 15. We got um, the Heroic Age Vengeance of Moon Knight, number 10. Um, pretty cool cover there. I, I dig it, so I grabbed it. Then we have Moon Knight, number 2. Also a very cool cover. And switching gears to Dark Horse, we have some Aliens vs. Predator action here. This is the Deadliest of Species mini-series. Super cool cover as well, might I add. But what I noticed and thought was pretty intriguing was that these are written by Chris Claremont. Very surprising. I had no clue that he has um, worked on Aliens books, so that was quite the surprise. But here we go with number two as well. And then here's number three. I really dig these um, covers here. I, I love how they use just the, the plain solid color background. We got the blue, red, and green. So yeah, really dig that. So yeah, it was Pretty happy to find those for 75 cents a piece. And then I ran into this surprise. Uh, this is Aliens Earth Angel and it's a one shot, I believe. Um, and this is written and illustrated by John Byrne. I also had no idea that he worked on Aliens. So yeah, and then I found this. Uh, this is Aliens Colonial Marines number one. Um, just really digging that cover. Love it. Love, love, love. Um, I'm missing number two, but here's number three. Here's number four. And five. Um, we also have number eight here, so it jumps there. And then we have nine. And ten. And there are ten issues in this mini-series, so... Yeah, I have... I have quite a good amount of them, but still missing a few, so I'll have to work on that. And then we have Clyde Barker's Hellraiser. Um, at first I thought this was a one-shot, I wasn't sure, and then when I looked on the side, it's in that like prestige type of score-bound format, and it's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that there, 
no you can't um it says book 20 and i was like whoa okay well i'm not sure if i'm gonna get all of them but we'll start with this and see how it is <laughs> and i'm sure it's not really a good place to start to begin with but whatever <laughs> So look right there, I also noticed that uh, Neil Gaiman worked on this, so pretty cool. Had no idea. Oh my bad, looks like I skipped some Aliens books. Um, we have Aliens Music of the Spears number one, and this is also from a mini series. And then we got number three. Alright, moving on, we have this really obscure um, uh, Halloween horror number one. You guys know I'm into horror and Halloween. I uh, love Halloween. And yeah, I saw this and I was pretty intrigued because if you notice, all the kids that are gathered around in their Halloween uh, costumes, they're all carrying like weapons behind them. And this um, old lady uh, is trying to give them candy apples and. Uh, has a little jack-o'-lantern on the tray. So, yeah, those kids are up to no good. <laughs> I can't imagine what's going to happen next, but yeah, I guess we'll have to see. To read it to find out. So, yeah, how to grab that. Um, I think this one was a buck. Yeah, that one was a buck, and then moving on, I found some Robocop. Always gotta grab that Robocop. This is Robocop number two, uh, Prime Suspect. So this is a another um, little mini series. This is number four. Um, then I found this, the Toxic Avenger number one. Awesome! Like I didn't expect to find that whatsoever, uh, and I haven't really seen it anywhere. So yeah, that was a must grab. Um, and then we have the Mummy, and this is a comic adaptation of Anne Rice's novel. Very cool. Some more obscure books. We have Warp number one. Very interesting. You know, how to grab it. Because you just don't see stuff like this very often. And when you do, you have to take advantage. Because, I mean, who wants to miss out on the coming of Lord Cumulus? You know, just have to grab it. Just have to. Yeah, and that's all I have to say about that. Moving on, we have uh, Tasma, the Congo Queen. And this is by uh, B-Movie Comics. I didn't even know that existed, but, you know, I found this and I was like, oh... This looks interesting, and I must read this. And it's only a dollar, so why not? Uh, then we have Whisper. Also never heard of this. If you happen to know anything about these books, just let me know, because I would love to learn more about all these. Yeah, she looks like some kind of assassin, and she's about to wreck her face right now. So yeah, that, that seemed pretty cool to me. Then we got Savage Ninja. Um, this is number one by Cadillac Comics. Uh, again, never seen this before in my life. Looks kind of cool. The origin of Michael Savage. Don't know. Um, and th these books, they're in pristine condition, might I add. Very nice. Um, yeah, that was published in 1984. Very interesting. But again, if you guys know anything about this, let me know. Um, this is more known. <laughs> Batman vs. Predator number two. And this is two of four, so pretty cool. And then we have Voodoo number one. We got... Oh, look at this bag. It's so grody. <laughs> I gotta change that. Uh, Superman 3. Uh, this is the official adaptation of the movie. Very cool. I mostly got it because of this. This is awesome. Just super iconic. Rest in peace, Christopher Reeves. Very cool. 
Um, then we have uh, what the number nine um, Wolverine with like the hairiest armpit in the world. But yeah, had to have it. Then we have um, this is awesome. I didn't even know this existed either. The Adventures of Snake Plissken number one. Marvel presents Paramount Comics. Like, what other Paramount comics are there out there that I don't know of? Like, now I'm just really curious, and I, I, I got, have to do research after this. <laughs> so, then we have The Phantom, number one. Pretty cool. You know, I need to rewatch that movie. I remember watching it when I was little, and I didn't think much of it. But I also just can't really remember too much either, so I guess that's a bad sign. Anyway, moving on. We have number two as well. And then, guys, we have uh, Red Sonia, number one uh, of the two issue limited series um, with good old Arnold right here. And lo and behold, we have the second issue as well. So I'm really stoked to read that. Very cool. All right, hold up. Look, I gotta move all these books. Alright guys, so last for the comic books, uh, I picked this up. This was more expensive. This was $5. But this is uh, Darth Vader number 3. This is the second printing. First appearance of Dr. Afra, and the cover is by Adi Granoff. So very, very cool. Um, had to pick that up. I have the first printing, but I've never seen the second printing out there. So yeah, I thought I'd just pick that up. I figured I could make an exception since all the other comic books were like less than a buck, so anyway, yeah, grabbed that. And then lastly guys, I know these aren't necessarily single issue comics, but I still wanted to share them. Um, this lady gave these to me at a really good price. Uh, these are hardcover books, um, really cool. Uh, Richard Stark's Parker. Before getting this, I didn't know anything about Richard Stark, which is actually his pen name. I forget what his real name is. Um, Donald Westlake. That's his real name. But anyway, um, yeah, so he apparently wrote a series of Parker books. So yeah, The Hunter is the first book, and then The Outfit is the second book. And these were both uh, adapted and illustrated by Darwin Cook, which, as you guys know, if you guys follow me at all, you know that I love Darwin Cook. And I'm currently collecting um, the uh, landscape format uh, variants that he did for the New 52. So yeah, I'm a huge fan. But anyway, yeah, I got both of these books for $5. Not each, for both. <laughs> so it was a killer deal. And, um, yeah, just the art in there is awesome. Like, of course it is. It's Darwin Cook. But, yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked to uh, be reading this. So, yeah, just thought I'd share that. Pretty cool. And the same lady also had a set of Fatal books. And I had heard of this series, but I never read it. Or I honestly have never even seen the single issues. I just know of it from like other people's videos back in the day, so yeah, um, this is by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, so I got the first one right there, Death Chases Me, and then um, got the uh, book two, Devil's Business, we got book three, West of Hell, and then we have book four, Pray for Rain. So, yeah, the lady sold this to me for 10 bucks for all of them. Like, the whole set. So, I was pretty surprised at the price. So, um, and yeah, I've always been somewhat intrigued by the series, so I thought I'd pick them up. I, I don't know if uh, the series ends at book four or whatnot. I gotta look into that. But even if it doesn't, like, this is a great start. So, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this as well. Um, and you all know I love horror, so this looks like a really good mix of horror, mystery, noir, and that's all right up my alley, like, I love it. So, 
yeah, gotta love those femme fatales as well, right? <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, I was gonna do some mystery mini unboxings right now, but looks like I'm running out of space on my phone, so I gotta hurry up and do this. Um, but yeah, guys, if you like the video, give me a like or subscribe or both. I don't hate it. You can also find me on Twitter and on Instagram at pop.comics, and I guess I'll catch you all over there. Later.